Okay, uh, everyone thinks uh, motors should be equal, but um, often your motor may not be performing as well as someone else's, and you want to know why. Uh, one reason is um, the sensor boards are not very well made on some motors, and uh, when you test them, uh, you don't. They should all give exactly the same advanced timing to enable the motor to work really nice at high revs. This one's a good one, 44, 44, 43. The perfect result would be uh, all exactly the same, but that is pretty close. And uh, I find that these um, Thunder Powers and, and similar manufactured motors do give a good sensor board reading. However, looking at a sensor board inside a motor, uh, most of them you can see a few you can't see, such as the LRP Nosram ones, they're a different design. And on the sensor board, you've got three Hall Effect devices one there, one there, and one there. Now they're soldered on and they should be equally spaced around the ring. And they determine as the magnet, the rotor goes round, as the field passes across the Hall Effect device it changes its resistance and that's picked up by the sensor wire. Now if these haven't been soldered in very well you will get variation as it passes each one. So we're going to have a look at one that's um, a long way out and see if we can resolder the sensor back into its little box. Now these look pretty good on this one but we're going to test one from another motor that is miles out and then see what we can do with it. Now here's a motor that doesn't appear to be performing as well as some other people's. So looking at the um, timing of the sensor board during the test, uh, although it says average 47, it goes from 43 to 50 and one's at 48. So that one that is at 43 is going to have less time impulses. So as it, at, very, at high revs, it's going to uh, give more power on phase B and A than on phase C. And the motor's going to have some electronic vibration, which is bound to affect its performance. So what I'm going to have, a, I'm going to take this um, sensor board out and see if we can spot the one that is not being soldered properly in its position. So I'll do that next and see if we can do anything about it. I've taken the sensor out and looking at it you might be able to see that this uh, this one here is offset that way and um, one of the others is not as good as it should be but that one is miles out and that it was um, phase C that was out and I would guess it's going to be uh, that one that's out. So I'm going to move it by um, using this uh, soldering iron with a very fine, very fine tip and uh, by heating it up uh, and then moving it slightly with probably with a pair of tweezers uh, I'm going to try and center that up into the uh, into the center of its little white box which and then we measure it see if it makes any difference uh, hopefully it will I've resoldered that one uh, it's there and moved it to the right a bit and uh, now I'm going to reassemble and uh, see what difference it's made. Um, I used the, the soldering iron, as I said, with the uh, very fine tip, and you he you just heat it up until it you heat one side, and it will transfer the heat through the whole effect device and unsolder the others. You have to be very careful and uh, not to knock it completely off. But anyway, let's have um, a go. Well, I fiddled around with the sensor board and um, moved uh, a couple of the sensors backwards and forwards. And 
I think about as far as I'm going to fiddle with it now. I've got it um, 45, 48, 46. When I started it was 48, 50, 43. So I've managed to move that one down. And uh, they've, they've uh, come out about that figure, um, which is much closer. I w I worked out from also the position of the sensors on the board was three, and I worked out it was A, B, and C. Uh, so I knew that um, if I wanted the rotor is going anti-clockwise. So if you move these towards the rotor as it approaches, that advances the timing. And if you move the sensor away, it will reduce it. So for instance, to reduce reduce A, I had to uh, move it this way, away from the direction. Uh, and you do that, there's three soldered t tabs on each sensor. And it's best if you just heat these two, they become unsoldered, and then you can use some pliers, uh, tweezers, I mean, just twist it a little bit away without unsoldering the other tab. Um, and if you wanted to advance the timing on one of them, say on C, it worked out it's that way, and then I'd uh, twist it that way towards the rotor. Um, these weren't marked A, B, and C. Some, some sensor boards, uh, this one for instance, can't see it, but it's got um, B, it's A, B, and C actually marked on, on the circuit board, which helps. Um, another thing that I normally mention is that you must get make sure the shimming is correct. You don't want any vibration in and out on the shaft because that really messes the timing up. Uh, so you should shim it to be just the minimum movement. Uh, some motors have rubber O-rings or crinkle-cut washers to take up any play and allow for expansion of the shaft. If you put too many um, washers on and jam it up tight, it's not good because uh, this will expand and it'll press against the bearing, and that won't be good either. Anyway, try and, uh, if you rebuild it or lose any washers or anything, uh, make, when you put it together, check the movement in and out. And also the other end, if you lose any washers off the other end where the... Where the uh, the magnet is running very close to the board. This board, say, make sure it the magnet is not rubbing on top of the sensors. So you might have to put um, a washer on when you put it in, and there should be a tiny little air gap just clearing the end of the magnet, and so that um, it gets the best uh, magnetic field, but without touching. Um, I can check the KV now. It's drawing about six, seven amps. I like to set them about six amps. Uh, I just find it works the best. Uh, 20, 2,800 KV, near 21,000 RPM, so it's not bad. So that's said about right. Um, on the uh, M bell, it's showing about 50, 50 degrees. So um, slightly optimistic. Okay, so um, that's a 17.5 Trinity. So uh, it's the best I can do with that one. Hopefully, it performed well in the car.